Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Covington City Council special meeting for study session. In compliance with state law, City Council special and regular meetings are held in a hybrid format with in-person, telephonic, and virtual options for public viewing and participation. Call this meeting to order, and Chris, if you could please call the roll. Council Member Soltis. I'm here. Council Member Porter. Here. Council Member Hartsock. Here. Council Member Harjahausen. Present. Council Member Simomo. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Smith. Here. And Mayor Wagner. Here. We have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you, Krista. Uh, items for so. on our agenda is to discuss funding options for parks maintenance and operations. And I'll turn this over to Regan. Oh, Ethan. Ethan. Okay. <laughs> Tag, you're it. All right. Uh, and tonight's presentation is going to be a little bit of me and a little bit of Casey. Um, I'll kick it off. Uh, back at the council summit in January, there were a couple of action items uh, that came out of that meeting related to the maintenance and operations of city parks. Uh, the first action item had to do with the desire to increase levels of service for, for park maintenance. And the second action item and the focus of tonight's study session uh, is to look at what funding options are available to support increases level in, to support increasing levels of service for park maintenance, uh, if that's what the council chooses to do. Uh, so we'll be presenting on uh, two different funding options tonight. There are levy lid, lid lifts, uh, which the council is probably familiar with because they can be used for almost anything. Uh, and then we'll also present on Metropolitan Park Districts, uh, which you may also be familiar with, but we'll provide some information uh, as to that option. Um, we only have a few slides, so there'll be plenty of time for questions and discussion. Um, and really what we're looking for um, is uh, really direction at the end of this. Is there interest to pursue any of these funding options uh, in any direction? To so with that, I'll kind of kick it over to these. Okay, so some of this will probably be familiar. We talk about these generally every year at the summit, just what type of revenue options are available. So for this slide, we've got levy lid lifts and we've got the MPD. Um, so in, the first column that says single year levy lid lift. So there's. Can you use your mic? Sorry. So there's there's four types of levy lid Thank lifts: you. a single year temporary, a single year permanent, a multi year temporary, and a multi year permanent. So there's some different flavors, and if you have some interest, I've got some wonderful graphs I can show you if you want to see how they work. So for the single year. It's after year one, the levy amount increases to 1% annually for a specific number of years. After the measure expires, the levy, the levy reverts as if the lid never existed. So you can picture it as it's a one-year lift, and then we can do it. It's it's to buy a thing, to buy something. We need to go buy a police vehicle or something. We need a one-year lift. We need a chunk of money. We want to go buy this thing. And then the permanent option is... You lift in the first year, and then that becomes your new levy rate permanently ongoing. So you lift it. Let's say you need an additional, you want to, um, I was going to say purchase an officer. <laughs> you want to <laughs> buy a widget, and you want to, um, you need money ongoing to take care of that widget. So you want to lift it 5% in the first year, and that becomes your new levy rate for all time. You, you get the 1% on top of that, basically. So there's no levy lid lift cliff, they call it. And then the multi-year levy lid lift is a little bit different where you get to lift it six times. So you can um, picture it, you can lift it 1% and then 2% and 3% and 4% and 5%. You can do it a lift. And then at the temporary option would revert back to what it was at the very beginning. Whereas the permanent, that final year of lift becomes your new levy limit, and then you get your 1%, 1%, 1%, 1%. So that's kind of how those work. Depending on what you're using them for, there's just different options. So if you're buying a certain thing, you may only use a certain one. If you want something ongoing, you need to cover debt service for a certain amount of time, that type of thing. You can structure it to what you need. And then, uh, so both of them can be used for, uh, well, any lawful government purpose, the multi-year lift, you are limited to the pur purpose statement in the ballot measure. And then the election date is special or primary or general for the single years and primary or general for the election. 
all three of these options will be simple majorities. And then for the MPD, the MPD, you can just think of it as um, it's a special purpose district. And you can just think of it as another little city within our city. So it can levy its own property tax. So um, it gets, uh, it's an ongoing levy. There's two pieces to it. There's a 50 cent piece and there's a 25% piece for the purposes of the 1% property tax levy lift or levy, excuse me, they lump that 75 together. So you take that 75 cents and then you're allowed to do 1% growth. The only thing I will mention with an MPD is those two different pieces. It's considered a junior taxing district. So there's some limitations on um, the two different pieces have two different uh, levels of hierarchy in the counties. They've got this big chart. So the first, the 50% or the 50% lid lift is more protected than the 25%. So if, for example, um, they have a couple different ways they look at it, but if, for example, all of the taxing districts around us exceed $5 and 60 cents, that's the, that's the limit. So let's say the fire district does something and it puts us at $5 and 90 cents. The law, state law requires us to only be at $5 and 60 cents. So they're gonna prorate all those different districts and take a little bit away from us to get us down to that $5 and 60 cents. So unfortunately being a junior taxing district, you could get, you could get deemed. Um, fortunately, the 50% is, is pretty high up on the hierarchy. The 25% is a little bit, well, opposite. <laughs> the 25% is higher. You've got more chance of that 25% getting hit versus uh, the 50%. It's pretty confusing but um, th those are the two pieces. So for the MPD, it can be used for the management, control, improvement, maintenance, and acquisition of parks, parkways, boulevards, and recreational facilities. Um, it can be held at any special primary or general election. And again, it just requires a simple majority. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is once you form a metropolitan parks district, you're allowed to um, go out for your own debt. You can go out for your own bonds. You can go out for a levy lid lift if you choose because you're your own special district. Uh, so there's some voting options that you've got. There's also some non-voting um, bonds you can do. It's it's on the next slide, I'll give it, but it's a smaller dollar amount. But So there's uh, some things you can do. You can just think of it as a, another little city within our city. Any questions? Oh. Can you, can you just clarify, is it 50% or 50 cents? 50 cents, I'm sorry. 50 cents okay. and 25 cents. Thank you. Yes, okay. yeah, up to 75 cents. And it's- Reminder to turn on your mics when you're speaking. Okay. And it's super close to what our current levy is right now for the city. So it's it's easy for me to determine like how much money that would bring in. And I'll show that on the next slide because we're currently about 72 cents per thousand um, assessed value. Okay, so some of the benefits of the levy lid lifts allow cities to exceed the 1% annual um, levy that we have by state law. And as you know, our, our expenditures are growing higher than that 1%. So that's a, it's definitely difficult when we're, when we're stuck with that 1% that we can only lift by. And it's got some flexibility again, like I said, in structuring between the temporary and the permanent options and the one-year lifts and the up to the one or the one to six-year lifts for the, the permanent, the multi-year permanent and only recru uh, requires approval by the simple majority of voters. Uh, the revenue at the full 75 cents, it can be $3.7 million. Um, I would say that that, like I said, is exactly almost what most um, folks are paying in pro property tax right now. So it would be kind of like doubling their, <laughs> doubling their levy, but- uh, Pardon? Oh. Oh, <laughs> and um, these types of funds can be used for increasing park maintenance levels of service. They can also be used for building parks capital reserve. And then, like I mentioned, there's a non-voted debt capacity where uh, MPD can do 10.5. Um, this is a oh, level, 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 excuse me, $10.5 million of non-voted debt capacity. So we could go out for that without a vote of the, the people if we had a project or something of that nature that was that was under that dollar amount. 
And I have a lot more information on debt capacity, the levy lid lifts. If you guys have any questions, if you want to see any of the other graphs, if it's easier to see it graphically on how they work or if you have any of those type of questions. All right, benefits of an MPD. Were you going to do this part? Sure. Okay, or am I doing this part? <laughs> um, so uh, MPD is a, it's kind of more like a permanent levy lid lift. It's a permanent option for ongoing funding for parks and recreation. Um, it can be used for operations and maintenance um, as well as kind of building a capital reserve um, for capital projects. Um, some of this is kind of a repeat, but um, it only requires a simple majority of voters after which uh, the MPD's legislative body, which would be the city council if the boundary was just the city, uh, may approve up to uh, 75 cents per thousand levy, like Casey explained. And I guess the, the nuance of that is often what happens is MPDs don't need the full 75 cents per thousand right away. So they'll form an MPD and it might be at a 25% level or whatever they whatever uh, they want to set it at. Then as needs change, it can be adjusted by the legislative body, which would be city council. Uh, that can be adjusted up or down kind of per their authority. Um, can be used for park maintenance and capital reserve. The non-voted debt capacity is up to 10.5 million. Um, and then if you want to go after a big dollar amount, you'd have to go out just like any bond and um, get a 60% plus one or super majority uh, vote. Um, and that's where that's come up before during the community center uh, presentations and discussions. Uh, that would require that level of vote. So that's kind of brings us to our last slide, which is really the end of the presentation. Uh, we did just throw down a few questions on here just to kind of prompt discussion, but really the discussion's up to um, the council. Um, I mean, the most basic question is, is there any interest to pursue any of these funding options? And then if so, uh, is there a preference over the levy lid lift or the MPD? Um, and then also, I think there's a little bit of clarification that would be helpful to know if this is just wanting to focus on operations and maintenance, or is there also an interest to maybe have it be available for capital uh, projects as well? So. Thank you, Ethan. Casey, do you also have any questions? Debbie? I think Sean, you first. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Can, so the, the voted debt capacity, is that... Just leave it on. Is the voted debt capacity? Thank you. Is the voted debt capacity a bond measure? I mean, it, or is it? Could it be other things? Uh, yeah, it would be a, a voted bond measure. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And so you said that we could on the MPD we could go for less than seventy five cents if we didn't need the full. Correct. Um, and would it be typical to use an MPD? just for the purpose of uh, operations and maintenance of a park? Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's two ways to look at how uh, MPD is typically formed. Some of them are for a limited and specific purpose. Um, and there's examples of those in the area and they're either for sometimes aquatic centers or community centers. Um, and you limit what those funds are you can be used for. So if it's just for an aquatic center or pool, then you couldn't use it to take care of maintenance at a park or something like that. Or you can have more of a general use MPD um, where it, it can be used for any of the allowed uses within the RCW, uh, which I think is kind of what Casey read off at one point, it includes basically all parks, boulevards, uh, recreation facilities, things like that. Um, the advantages of having it um, not limited is it allows that legislative body to really kind of have some flexibility to say, hey, we have a need for park maintenance right now um, and we want to use the funds for that. If they want to change what those funds are used in the future, they have that ability, whereas if it's a limited or specific purpose, um, they're kind of limited to, to whatever it's for. Thank you. Sean. Thank you. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I, I think there's also the answer to this question. Yeah, there's yeah. interest in finding sustainable funding for our park yeah. operations. I mean, get that question all the time. It seems like um, that's one of the issues the public uh, is sensitive to, and primarily level of service. You know, on the fields being mowed. Are we seeing enough parks in our community? So I think there is interest in that. Um, I guess I'd have to, you know, we, we have had some interest or uh, experience with both of these, where we live with in the MPD. Um, I guess just from what I've seen from this, um, I would probably lean toward the MPD for a couple of things. Uh, reasons one, it's more permanent. You know, we talked about so we wouldn't have to keep going to this is an issue that's not going to go away. And as our, as our city grows, we'll see more use and more demand for our parks. Um, so there's going to be more stress on our resources. Um, and it, it allows us to uh, raise more funds over a longer period of time. Uh, so I, I agree with that. I did have some questions though. Well, and the other thing I'd say. Um, if, would it show up on the ballot if we went with levy lid lift as levy a levy lid lift? You know, is that basically what you you? Reason I ask is that whole idea has negative connotations to it, and I think the public there's there's some that will vote no just to say no on a, on a levy lid lift. Mm -hmm. So I think right there you're you're battling a headwind. Um, so. Uh, uh, on Metropolitan Park District, uh, you mentioned it was a property tax. I assume the lead lift, lead lift is property tax too. Got it. Uh, just again, no, that's going to be a, a higher burden. I mean, we just, you know, our, our voters, although they passed the most recent crop on uh, roads, we were able to show them that we were spreading the cost down among people that actually use it. So if there's any way to to spread that cost out to people that use uh, our parks, that'd be great. Um, and then if the only other question, is there a board for them? You mentioned that they can levy taxes, raise debt, uh, bond. Is there a board? And would we have oversight over what they do? Or can they yeah, do so those things on their own? It's a good question. The formation of the park district really has to do with setting a boundary um, and depending on what that boundary is, depends on the makeup of what that board will be. And so um, uh, looking back at when we did the first feasibility study with Maple Valley for an MPD, and we were looking at an MPD, that would um, either have to have its own elected board, um, mm -hmm. or it would have to have representation from the different jurisdictions that participate in it. If um, it was the same boundary as the city, um, which would probably, you know, be the most logical boundary for just the city's park system, then the council can just be the legislative body, basically act as the parks board. Um, it could elect, it could choose, you could choose to have it be its own elected body, but it's kind of a redundant option. Oh, I'm good. So question on that um, with the board, so if we went out for an MPD within city limits and say it passed, then at a future date, can we expand the boundaries and go out for another vote for those outside that? Or do you have to redo the entire? Mm -hmm. No, I think I think there's there's two things. One, if the city annexes any area just as a city, those areas get also annexed into oh. um, the boundary of the MPD. But if you're looking to expand the boundary of the MPD um, to like unincorporated, to unincorporated areas, we might have to have the attorneys take a look at that because um, on one hand, I want to say you would just have to have them vote on that, but it also changes things because if the city council is already the board, then the city council, yeah. the board would have to change. change the board. Yeah. But I just, mm -hmm. what I'm, is if, so the board would have to change but do you have to take it out to a full vote of the people already have voted for the Metropolitan Parks District 
within the city limits, do they have to vote again for the expansion? Sorry, I should have worded it differently. We, we can find out for sure, but typically you wouldn't have to. Okay. It would just be those that are joining. Okay. Kind of like the Sound Transit, right? If, if Covington wanted to join that, it would just be Covington that voted to do that, not the entire okay. Sound Transit region. But okay. we'd have to confirm that for okay. sure. Yeah. All right, thank you. And, and there, just to add to, there are um, options where, if you're using the example of unincorporated King County in the city, the King County uh, uh, Council could appoint somebody to the board mm -hmm. along with city council, but they can also waive that. And um, I feel like there's an example somewhere, maybe in the Sideview Parks District, where uh, they've waived that option, but that would have to be a decision for the King County Council. Okay, thank you. Joe? Just a couple questions. Um, would the, if we got an MPD, would that remove the parks budget from the city budget and move it to its own, or would we have com have them combined? So I don't think there's any such planting rules around it, but so I think it's just a decision yeah. of the city. Oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Okay. And then where is the closest MPD to the city, and how long did that take to get created? Or do we not have an idea on that last lot of questions? Closest one. Des Moines. Des Moines, Tacoma. Yeah, Tacoma there's there's a lot. Like a Tacoma is an old one. That was like built into the state charter or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. It Bend. covers most of Pierce County. I think so. North, North Bend, North Bend, Tequila. Tequila. Um, Seattle now has one. Um, and, and by how long it took, what do you, what like, do you mean? Like from the idea of, hey, we want to do this to finally the citizens of the area, the voting citizens of that particular area said, yes, let's do that. Was it a, hey, we, we've met for two and a half years with people in their neighborhoods and their homes talking with them, and then we got it on the ballot? Or was it, hey, we decided this on September 1st, we're putting it on the February ballot. Right. We got lucky and everyone voted for it, yes. So I know talking with, um, uh, Jim Nelson, who I think did a study session with council back in August, um, he's been part of different MPD formations, and he says you should plan on a year of planning. Uh, and I would say that's kind of a minimum, uh, but you don't want to just drag out the process too long either. Yeah. Um, so, and then I got one more. Uh, so actually, never mind. You just answered it. This is part of the same question. Yeah. Thank you, Christina. So if we can a city have multiple entities, or is it just an expansion of one and changing all the terms on it? Because if I know that specifically the aquatic center, that was probably the only thing you could fall back on. Yeah, I I would I don't think I know of any where there's multiple MPDs overlapping areas. I think that's just where you go to more of a general purpose MPD that can be used for, you know any park purpose you want, whether it's park maintenance, which yeah. may be a place to start with. And then if the community center uh, needs to pass a capital, then you'd go back out to the voters to pass that bond. So then, so yes, so if we had a, a concrete specific MPD that was for parks, right, for the parks, and then we wanted to include the, the aquatics, we would have to go back out for a vote to expand and change terms? It really wouldn't have to change the formation or anything. Um, but it, you'd have to go back out to do a large bond, uh, which is a 60% super majority that you would need. Just like if you're going out. But it wouldn't, have to, it wouldn't have to recreate the MPT. So that's what I'm saying. Would we, would we just like add on the aquatic center or would we just, or would we say now, yeah. it was, now it's forever? So as council you know, creates it as a general purpose um, uh, metropolitan parks district then we we can do that and Correct. so like either say if we need to raise money for an aquatic center then that mpd is authorized to do that sure. uh, through a vote obviously but if it was specific for parks then then, then it's actually 60 percent sure no the mpd couldn't go out for an for an aquatic center vote. no i know i know but then with that. the revoting would be a 60. uh what was that <laughs> no i think the 60 percent vote just comes in if you need a large capital dollar amount just to raise the funds yes yeah because yeah. yeah. because i think the non-voted um I, bond I, that can be passed is like 10 million so if you need more than that yeah, yeah. anybody else 
Yeah. So Casey, you mentioned that there, uh, the state puts a cap of $5.60 per total for any le uh, levy or... Um, there's there's a couple different reductions. I'd use that one just as a simple. There's, lot, there's also a second one that's like a $10 reduction that the state does, but it's on, there's two different hierarchies. It's very confusing. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I can, uh, I guess I was just kind of, well, curious and maybe, I don't know if you can weigh in on this or not, but what is our, what is our capacity for being able to like, sh if we started out low, for example, and then decided, like say we started out at the 25 cents. Sure. And then decided, well, let's go up to the 50 cents or 75. 75 is the limit for right. APD. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, and that, but then in the meantime, in the two next two or three years, some other body has come in and now now we're at our cap and we're kind of like what what how much wiggle room do we have until we max out right, right so that's the tough one and it's year by year um uh -huh. it's based on all of the um we call them tax tax districts around us mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh unfortunately since we'd be a junior taxing district we're kind of at the mercy of what the higher ones than mm -hmm. us do um like uh well, cities would be one. Mm -hmm. um, cities, utilities, uh, EMS, utilities. cultural access programs, um, and then we finally come down to us. We're fifth in line, so um, that's when they would start prorating us. And then for the ten dollar limit, we are like way down. We're sixteenth in line, which is fantastic. <laughs> so the chances of them getting to us are probably pretty slim. And that's on the fifty cent portion. So our fifty cent portion is pretty well protected. Um, it's the it's the twenty five percent portion that we could be prorated on. And unfortunately, that's that's the tough one is we won't know from year to year. It's a tough one. That would be something like um, if you did have something like that that wasn't so reliable, you could use it for building capital reserves. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, rather mm -hmm. than ongoing, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. operations. Yeah, rather. that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, what? How much do we spend on our operations and maintenance, and what is the potential gap mm -hmm. if we increased? maintenance to the level i think four was the highest or maybe level one was the highest like what are the dollar amounts of those two our current base budget is yeah. a million i'm sorry a million nine hundred ninety five thousand that's that's what we're spending now that's what we're currently two. spending yep. and then the gap in order to move all let's say all parks to the highest level of service well, i don't know I don't know. I think that would be kind of a follow up. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking, is that one whole extra human mm -hmm. or it would is be more that... than that? Yeah. Okay. I, I think it could all nearly double this. Okay. Because you'd need. Including founders. All the parts. Jenkins mm -hmm. Creek. Because founders it hasn't necessarily been part of our. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And then parking and bathrooms hasn't been part of I, our. Budget. I know Don and his crew have been doing some work on that. I don't know if it's. Okay. Finalize them. And you'd need it more equipment also. Yeah. Right. So this is ongoing. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Ongoing. Any other questions? So I guess the first question is, is there consensus that we, there is an interest to increase funding for parks, operations, and maintenance? Show of hands if there is. Okay. So then I know this is given to us tonight, and but we've been talking about it. Does council have a preference tonight, whether to go with a levy lid lift or an MPD? I mean, just because we discussed that's the way we want to go doesn't mean that we can't change it as we move forward. It just make it easier for staff. Joe? Uh, I would say an MPD would probably be the way to go. Okay. Anybody else? Jennifer? I like the flexibility of an MPD. And actually, when I was on three pack, that was our recommendation was an MPD like eight years ago. Um, and it was for uh, maintenance and for the potential of uh, a pool. So, you know, it, it honestly makes the most sense to allow us to expand if we want to. We don't have to. It just, it sets us up for growth. Could we already include the aquatic center in this MPD. I mean, we know it's kind of coming in the future. Could 
would it make sense for us to already put on the ballot, even though it's not on the ballot, but in, within the limitations? Because it sounds like those are the two hot ticket items, right? I just don't Parks. think people are ready to spend that money, mm -hmm. personally. And, and not necessarily take it yet, but say this would be for that, so uh, so as not to go back and have to... Are you saying for the maintenance and operations of aquatic center or to include funding for the project? Before now, it sounds ridiculous. No, no, I'm just no, what I was asking funding. to clarify. No, funding for. Because that was going to be my next question is for an MPD, if council was just to go the direction of MPD, <clears throat> do we want it to include just operations and maintenance or the potential to include for funding for a potential aquatic center? So, so it wouldn't sound funny if we said parks and maintenance, you know, parks maintenance and funding of an aquatic center. No, mm -hmm. we could say that we want an MPD. We want to go towards an MPD, and then we can come back at a later date to decide what goes in that MPD. Oh. So that correct? if if we go out for a general purpose MPD, we can list all the things that it could potentially cover, which would be community center, parks, uh, operation, maintenance, whatever else there is that okay. it could cover. Okay. That would be and the there. key word yeah. is could, yeah, not it's will, so, but could, right. yeah. Okay. Well, I, I would hate for people to think that the yep. aquatic center is being covered because okay. exactly. Well, and and, and this isn't That's paying expensive. for the aquatic. They'll, yeah. they'll still have a say in paying for the aquatic center. Mm -hmm. This is just okay. the vehicle that could help raise okay. those funds for it, right? Okay. So we'd still have to go out to a vote, which would be a. 6%. Yeah, I would just be worried about them thinking yeah. that this is now paying for the aquatic center. But oh, hey, heads up, next year we're actually going to ask you for that. Right. Okay. Okay. Stuff Joe, then Beth. Oh, no, I was just going to say that um, if we're going to go with an, an, an MPD, that the best option for us would be to say, we want this is here's how we could do it. It's we want it for parks and maintenance, possible new parks, possible new aquatic center, community center, you know, possible, you know, fixing of the uh, in the roads that surround these parks. This is what this funding could be, could be for. Again, as Sebi said, the big key <laughs> word here is could. We have to make sure that when if we are going to do this, when we're out there talking with people at National Night Out, talking with them at homeowner association meetings, talking with them in Costco, that we put that emphasis on could, because we don't know how much this is going to bring us this first year, the second year, third year. Everything we talk about is, hey, we would love tomorrow that this brings in 120, you know, jillion dollars and we can do whatever we want to with it when in reality we're going to be saving for a couple of years before we see more than a project couple. from it mm -hmm. it's three million all right thanks joe beth yeah i don't yeah. know i i think the mpd is a really good option for all the reasons that we've stated i i just hesitate and i feel like using the word could is is a great first step but quite frankly it can be misread and honestly, I think what to kind of to Jennifer's point, or well, I mean, we all understand this. I don't want people thinking that it is going to cover everything because if they come, we're trying to build trust and having ultimate transparency. I think it's important to say maintenance. And I don't know how we have to actually word it when we put it on the ballot. Or it's specific. very specific language, actually, that we have to use. So. Right. I mean, because if we start listing all these things, people are going to go, oh, my gosh, we can do all this stuff. And I'm like, eh, we need to be realistic. I think it's very specific language for the actual ballot proposition. Okay. okay. And then I think, um, just like any ballot initiative, mm -hmm. there's the materials that get developed to kind of make the case for it. And that's kind of, I think, where people are talking about. I mean, because in, in my opinion, unless it's 10 years down the road before we get an aquatic center and we can, you know, build up a capital reserve, for lack of a better word, I think being putting some wording in saying this will also allow us to allow the public to vote on a bond for a, a larger project like an aquatic center, because then they can see that this yeah. is a really good option, but yet... There may be other really steps. good, and you can also say, well, maybe there's some smaller items that yeah, you can really deliver. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that can be done. Sean. And I think that goes, sorry, just to Jennifer's point mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. you know, people understanding that but, this isn't paying for the acquired. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. But it allows us to do that if they choose to vote on it. Thanks, Bill. Sean. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Sean. Sorry, Sean. Sean. 
Oh, you're you're much younger. <laughs> <laughs> and smarter. Um, I, I just, I'll just wait. I support the MPD. I think we need to ride it in the way or pitch it in the way that we can in the future, raise funds for these capital projects. Um, in our outreach material, I think uh, I would put in language to the effect that said voter approval would be needed to you know, raise mm -hmm. debt to fund things like the Y exam. That's just, you know, so you address exactly what you're saying that people think, oh, I voted for this and it's all good. Why am I voting mm -hmm. again? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's we have to say, we want to be transparent. We want to be up front. People don't like surprises. So if we tell them at the beginning, you know, this is just to start the mechanism and create funding for these already approved projects and then for future things, uh, we're likely going to have to go out for another vote. So, thank you. Anybody yeah. else? So, there's consensus to increase funding for parks and operation. Is there consensus to go out for an MPD at a future date? Okay. So, do we want to bring this back to us from what, what else would you like tonight? I think this is probably enough, and then we can kind of put together some planning options, maybe be part of budget or planning for the summit. I don't know. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Anybody else? Thank you. You, you want, sorry. No, go ahead. Any more clarification on whether council is wanting a general purpose MPD or a specific part of maintenance MPD? Mm. General, general purpose. purpose. General, general purpose. purpose. Yeah. General purpose. Yeah. General purpose. Yeah. That gives you more. You wanted it on the record. Uh, yep. <laughs> that's what yeah. you told us. Yeah. <laughs> we never change our minds. No. Yeah. Right. no I think there'll be time. iterations of it as this develops. I'll bring to the council, obviously, for, for feedback. Would we also need to put it on the ballot as such as who would be the governing body? And can that change if the red, if residents wanted to do a commission? Um, not to say they would have. I think it can change based on if you're the board, the governing body, mm -hmm. you can change that. Okay. All right. Anything else? All right. Thank you for bringing this to us. Great discussion. This meeting is adjourned.